a block of mass two kilograms connected by a rope across a 50 centimeter diameter. So it's a diameter, not a radius. Pulley is shown, there's no friction in the axle, but there is friction between the rope and the pulley. That, that friction between the pulley just means that it's not slipping. And not slipping implies that this relationship, x equals r theta, v equals r omega, and a equals r alpha, the relationship between angular and linear applies. So when they say friction there, what they mean is that it's pulled without slipping. Oh, right there, see, does not slip. So key phrase, tricky idea. Uh, the, weight, uh, the weight is accelerating upwards at 1.2 meters per second squared. What is the tension in the rope on the right side of the pulley? Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to call this, whoop, wrong, this tension 2, I'm going to call this tension 2, and this is just going to be called tension, which you could call tension one if you want, but not a big deal. And then we're going to look at the, this is a free body diagram of the block. This is going to be force gravity on the block pulling it down. So now I'm going to write an equation for this free body diagram on the block, which is going to give us, uh, let's see here, the sum of all forces on the block is going to equal tension 2. I'm going to write tension 2 first because it's bigger and I just want everything to be positive. Minus force gravity, which is going to be mass of the block times gravity, which we know is going to be mass of the block times acceleration. So the sum of all forces equals mass times acceleration. So tension 2, solving this, is going to be mass of block times gravity plus mass of the block times acceleration which is going to be the same as mass of the block times gravity plus acceleration, which since we're told the mass of the block is two, nice round convenient number, it's gonna be two times 9.8 plus, oh, I hope it's acceleration is convenient too. 1.2, it is convenient, thank you. So 1.2, so 9.8 plus 1.2 is 11, so we have 2 times 11, which is 22 uh, newtons. So that gives us tension 2. So now we can look at um, the pulley up here, and we're going to do, we already have, we can draw, we already did a uh, three body diagram again for this with tension two and tension over here. And then R is just gonna be like that. And so we can say, just like we said, the sum of all forces equals um, mass times acceleration. We're gonna say the sum of all torques, sum of all torques equals moment of inertia times angular acceleration. So the sum of all torques is gonna be, I'm gonna call this torque minus Torque 2, I think it's torque 2. Torque 2 comes from tension 2. And that's going to equal um, moment of inertia times alpha. Moment of inertia in this case is since it's a disk, it's going to be mr squared, one half mr squared. Let me check that real quick. I know I should just have it memorized by now. I don't. Oh. Solid disk. 1 half mr squared, yes. So we got that. So now, um, and then they give us a diameter, not a radius. So I'm gonna rewrite this one more time as 1 half mass diameter over two quantity squared. So, uh, Torque equals R cross F, where torque, uh, R, the cross product of R and F is a measure of how perpendicular R and F are. So for torque, oh, that's a terrible contrast. There we go. So since the rope is connected right here, the 
uh, moment arm, the radius from to the point of contact to the point of contact from the pivot from the axle axis is going to be 90 degrees. And the same thing on the other side, that's also going to be 90 degrees. So the cross product R cross F is just going to be one because the angle between R and the force, in this case tension, is 90 degrees. Sine of 90 degrees is one. They're both perfectly perpendicular, so in this case it's going to be R F. So coming back over here, this is going to equal R tension minus R tension two. So I just rewrote those, and that's going to equal Um, I'm going to write that in terms, so I'm going to factor one of these out, T minus T2, and then I'm going to write this as diameter over 2, T minus T2 equals 1 half mass diameter over 2 squared. So we've got diameter over 2 on both sides, so we have 2 on one side and only 1 on the other, sort of. So that cancels. Therefore, tension equals, I'm going to move tension to the other side, is one half. Did I forget? I forgot alpha, didn't I? Alpha. There's supposed to be an alpha right there. There we go. I forgot to carry that alpha over. So one thing I want to do is I need to find alpha as well. So alpha is um, come back up here alpha equals so if we use this equation right there alpha equals a over r which is a times 1 over d over 2 there we go so I'm going to come down here this becomes 1 over D over 2. Oh, I guess the radius doesn't even matter. Interesting. So that cancels with that. Perfect. This is working out swimmingly. So more math. So we get tension equals 1 half mass of the pulley, but I should have labeled that properly, plus tension 2. Hmm. Okay. Um, which becomes one half mass of the pulley, which is two kilograms as well. It's interesting that the mass of the block is two kilograms, but the pulley is 2.0 kilograms. Small things like that in life that don't matter bother me like you wouldn't believe. Plus tension two, which we already found, which is 22 newtons. So the total tension is one half times two. Hmm, okay, one half times two, which is one plus twenty-two newtons, which is twenty-three newtons. I guess at one newton plus twenty-three newtons, bam, tension is twenty-three newtons. So this is. 23 newtons. And just to draw this up here, this would be 23 newtons, and this side over here would be 22 newtons, and so it basically takes one newton to spin the pole. So, yep, recap what we did real quick, because I went through that kind of crazy and fast. We draw, drew free body diagrams, one for the tensions on the pulley, and one for the tension two and gravity of the block. From there, we wrote, wrote out equations for the free body diagrams. For the block, it was the sum of all forces is mass times acceleration. And for the pulley, it was the sum of all torques equals moment of inertia times angular acceleration. At that point, we just did math. We said moment of inertia for a disk is 1 half mr squared. And we said that the relationship between angular acceleration and linear acceleration is A equals R alpha. Did a bunch of math, did some canceling, and then got an answer. So, not too bad. That one worked out well. Hope it helped. See you next time.